The first thing that we need to do is we need to get ourselves the object selection tool. You want to get yourself a selection of the object and then you want to right click on here and go down to make work path. This will give us the option to set it between one to 10, depending on how accurate you want the tolerance to be. So for example, one is going to be very accurate, which will go exactly on the line, and then 10 will make it less accurate and make it more rounded off. So that is what we want. So we want to go to the middle ground of five and then press okay. So the next thing to do is to get ourselves a new layer above this one. We can then go down to the pen tool, you then want to swap on over to a white color and then you want to right click on the work path and go to stroke path. We can set it to a pen tool, untick this option and then press OK. And as you can see, it's created a very thin line on the work path. However, this isn't going to cut it if we're going to create a neon sign. So we need to also right click on this layer, go to blending options and then just get ourselves a stroke. With the stroke, you can either have it thin thick or completely up to you. But personally, I think that 12 works really well. And then we can press OK. So now that we've got ourselves the sign, we can also get ourselves a nice background such as this black brick background. I always like to use these ones, especially for neon signs, because it gives the glow a texture in the background and it just makes it look a lot more interesting. So we just want to get ourselves the banana. You want to go onto the first tool and right click on the layer and convert this into a smart object. This will then allow us to left click on here, drag the banana onto the background, and we're going to press Ctrl and T to scale this up. So we just want to center align it, double left click to apply, and then from here, we're going to hide this layer and focus on the background. Another key to making a glow really good is to have a dark background. So we just want to press Ctrl and J to get ourselves a copy of the background. And then you want to right click on here, go to blending options, and we're going to get ourselves a gradient overlay. In the gradient overlay, you want to set it to overlay for the blend mode, set it to 74 for the opacity, 150 for the scale, and the gradient is going to be a plain black and white. And you just want to left click on the top one and set this to 37%. We can also left click on the color and just set this to a black color. You can then press OK. And you also want to make sure that you inverse this right here. You can then go ahead and press OK. And as you can see, it's nice and dark. We can now bring back the neon sign and we can also get ourselves a mask layer on top of this one. Get yourself the brush tool, set it to a thousand with 0% hardness. We're going to set it on a black color and then you just simply want to left click on here and then make this nice and bright. However, we need to make sure that this is set to 100 and then just bring this back onto here like so. So it's going to look like a kidney bean. So to make the banana glow, all we need to do now is left click on the first layer, press Ctrl and J and get yourself a copy of it. We need to create multiple layers which will make the glow look really good. So the first one, we want to right click on this one go to blending options. And we just want to get ourselves a inner shadow, a outer glow, and then starting off with the inner glow, we want to set this one to multiply, set it to a black color. We're going to set the opacity to 30, angle to 30, and then the size to 34. We can move on to the outer glow. And for this one, we want to set it to linear dodge add on 40%, so it's not too aggressive. And then also the color that I'm using is called FFEA00. You can use any other color that you want, but personally, this is the color that I'll be using. We can also set the size of this one to 43. We can then go ahead and press OK. And we want to also go up to filter, go down to blur and get yourself a Gaussian blur. We just want to soften the edges up by getting a five pixel radius of a blur on the edges. You can then go ahead and press OK. And now we can move on to the other layer. Right click on here, blend in options. Same as last time, we want to get ourselves a inner glow, a outer glow, and also a drop shadow. For the inner glow, we want to set this one to multiply once again on a black color. 
we're going to set the opacity to 77. We want this one to be standing out a lot more. Set the angle to 30, same as last time, 34 for the size. Moving on to the outer glow, we're going to leave it on linear dodge add and set this one to 50%. Same color as before. And this one, we're going to put it all the way up to 250. So this is going to create a much bigger glow. And then finally for the drop shadow in here, we're going to set this one to 60% for the opacity on multiply with a black color, 120 for the angle. We're going to set the distance to 18. The size is going to be 87 and you want to set it to this contour right here. We can then go ahead and press OK. And as you can see, we now have a simple glow. However, we're going to make this look even better just by getting ourselves a new layer underneath this one. So you want to create yourself a new layer and drag this one underneath the banana. Once again, while selecting the brush tool, we're going to set the opacity to 34. We're going to set the mode to pin light and then set the opacity to 74. We're going to get ourselves the same color as before. So that is the FFEA00. Press OK. And all we need to do now is left click on here and add the background glow. And as you can see, this looks a lot better compared to before. And depending on how bright you want the glow to be, you can go over it once again and just make it even brighter if you wanted it to be really bright. However, I'm just going to have one layer of brightness and then to finish this off, the cherry on top is to go above all of these layers and we're just going to get ourselves an adjustment of a brightness and contrast. All we're going to do now is increase the contrast to 42 and this will just make it look really good. So as you can see, it just makes things look even better. And that is how you create a neon glow in Photoshop. And if you would like to see the next video that is similar to this, click on the screen and watch that next video. Until next time, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.